Hello and welcome to Age of Empires, the Age of Kings. This is the Age of Empires title that was ported to the Nintendo DS, and my physical copy of this is probably still in a drawer somewhere. Um, Age of Empires 2 was released in 1999, I believe. Age of Empires 3, 2005, and then this was 2006, I think. Um, originally, when I was looking for this, I thought it was a Game Boy Advance title. Really, for completely forgot that the Nintendo DS even existed. To be completely honest, I was like, "Oh yeah, it goes 3DS and Game Boy Advance 3D." I just completely forgot. Um, anywho, the aspect or aspect ratio, the dimensions of this video are going to look a little weird. I'm going to obviously stretch it a bit, but to, I'm not going to break the aspect ratio. So, which would be vertical versus width, but because um, otherwise it would look weird. Uh, this, how this looks, is also weird, of course, because Nintendo DS, so, everything's gonna be weird about this, it might not look great, that's what I'm telling you. This is a turn-based strategy game, whereas every other Age of Empires is a, I believe every other Age of Empires is a real-time strategy. Um, you know, so like StarCraft and Warcraft, that kind of gameplay style. But this one's a turn-based strategy, because that's the met that's the that's just what they went with for uh, when they ported it to DS. Um, and I think it's cool. I think it's interesting. I like the game. A few things about it: uh, you make your user profile. Just to, that's just whatever. Anyway, um, there are. There are campaigns to these. These are all kind of like single map um, missions, basically. They're kind of interesting. Um, have various objectives, etc. We'll take a look at one just to kind of show you what they look like overall. Um, there's also bonus items that you can get empire points. I can't remember if it's for just playing the game and, win and finishing matches, or if it's specifically from doing the campaign. But you can buy unique units, which are slightly better than their counterparts, like so Spikemen are just a little bit better, I think by 25 attack and 25 defense, than normal Pikemen. Um, and you can get some set piece battles, as well as just actual maps. So some of these are just normal maps, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm understanding right, and then the others are set piece battles. Player 1 must cross the Alps and pillage the Roman settlement. Player 2 must hold off the elephants. Play as mongrels versus Britons. Okay, so see you get so you get some you get some uh, some set piece maps to play one off missions. Um, but yeah, those are those are like purchasable things. They're kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool of an idea. Anyway, what we're gonna do? Like I said, we'll take a look at the campaign, and then we'll switch over to multiplayer, and I'll talk some multi uh, talk some of the things that go on there. Like as a turn based strategy, kind of interesting. We'll go to a campaign mission. Let's just drop down to Richard Lionhearted. We're not going to play through it, of course. I'm just hoping that his mission one will at least give you more of a glimpse of what campaigns are. All in the Family, Part 1. Raised in a land of intrigue and territorial conquest, Richard must fight against his ambitious brothers to keep hold of his lands. The heroes of each mission, by the way, you have Jean of Arc. You know, the, the maid from the Hundred Years' War. You have Minamoto Yoshitsune, who, um, you know, is the dude who basically was just trying to help his brother, Yoritomo. And Yoritomo was like, thanks, bitch, see ya! And left him out the dry, and Minotomo, uh, Minamoto, I think, gets... Or, and Yoshitsune gets, uh, killed along with Benki. Benki. Genghis Khan, no explanation really needed for Genghis Khan. Everybody knows who he is. Saladin, if you don't know, he was Richard Lionheart's uh, opponent. You know, he was the he was the opposite number on the on the on the uh, third camp, third crusade. He was the. I'm trying to remember if his position at that time would be what is equated to the leader of the various factions that exist existed at that time period in the Middle East. But I can't remember if he had if he had if he was in power at that point or not, or if it was like an after thing. I don't remember. His lineage, like his family line, 
um, would be considered a dynasty. And in historical terms, when you're looking at the Middle East, it's often separate, separated, you know, in terms of dynasties, because it's just easier to keep track of things that way. Um, and his is one of them. And I believe his children, like, not not necessarily his direct children, but his descendants sucked. So, it was, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it, his dynasty doesn't last too, too long. And Richard Lionhearted, obviously. Third Crusade as well. Okay. Cool, cool. I think that's everybody. Cool. All right, let's get back out. Uh, let's get, let's get to it. I did a piss poor job of introducing Saladin, military genius, great guy. Active more, uh, not just in Third Crusade, obviously. That just probably is the most famous thing in terms of what Westerners understand, uh, understand because of they, they'll, they'll. It's for people in the West. We learn about Richard the Lionhearted. I, and so by proxy, that's where we only, that's the only information we get solid in, unless you, out, unless you go out of your way, you know, so, yeah, All in the Family, part one, Richard Lionheart's Mission 1 mission, ah, 1570, 1579, <laughs> what, what kind of, I didn't even read that, what number did I get that from, in 1157, Eleanor of Aquitaine, who I think is a hero in Civilization, uh, not a hero, but a leader in Civilization VI, right? Anyway, gave birth to the third legitimate son of King Henry II of England. He was a lively, strapping, strapping boy who grew quickly into a large frame. He was well-educated, capable even of writing inspired poetry, but his nature was far from gentle. With armor and sword, he was a force to be reckoned with. His name was Richard I. Um, although born in Oxford, England, Richard was raised in Aquitaine, France, a land filled with territorial disputes and thinly veiled ambitions. Only the bold could prosper. Despite his youth, Richard was already a player in the politics of the land. In 1183, there was a major revo revolt in Gascony, one of Richard's territories. Fearing that the fighting might cause the eventual destruction of his kingdom, King Henry II, Richard's father, threw in his support with Richard in hopes of uh, quickly stopping things before they got worse. Well, I would hope. I know this didn't always happen, but if I'm a son of somebody, I would hope to God that they'd be willing to put, that they'd be willing to say, hey, assholes, that land's my sons. Stop it. My lord, the rebel armies who wave the blue flag are organizing in the southwest. And the southeast. And your father's troops, in purple, are stationed to the northeast. They have sworn to aid us in suppressing the rebellion. The king is observing these events with a keen eye. I just not disappoint him. Cool, cool. Thanks. Okay. This is actually an interesting uh, mission, I guess, now. Um... At any time, you can open up this little map screen thing. It's pretty nice. Okay. So we can actually do a lot of explanations here. So the enemy in this particular campaign... So this is a set-piece campaign, basically. Um, I guess every set, every campaign is technically a set-piece map. But, you know, we start with Richard the Lionheart... Get out of here. We start with Richard the Lionheart as our hero. He is the hero character for England. Um, I guess I'm Scout Calvary and a militia and the villager. Down in the southeast, you got these uh, these uh, rebels. Their town is known as Bayon. When they also start with a mill and a, they start with the barracks as well and a couple of troops. Over to the south east town of Talos. Man, Talos and Bayon are really close together in this game. You got your militia. You got a, you got a, the same deal. They have the same exact starting starting pool basically, and then you got up here with good old Richard Henry. Yeah, um, I'm not allowed to see if his town is named, but he has he has a little bit of starting stuff as well. I'm the only one who has to start by building his own town. Cool, really happy. This is good enough. Town center can go right there. When you're trying to make a town center, you'll notice that these terrain pieces have different things, different different markers. Not only do they have stat things that will assist you, such as movement and sight, whatever, whatever, sometimes defense perks, um, but they have 
they have a thing, you know, they have that tab buildings allowed, which tells you at a glance what things you're allowed to build on those squares. A town center supports four buildings that you care about. You can also put towers next to it. Who gives a shit? Uh, towers don't attack in this game. They're just passive defensive. Those bonus. You need four squares. The four squares that are immediately adjacent to it. When you build a mill, which is what I'm gonna put on this this week, you can have, you need you usually would like, but you don't always have the choice. Four squares where you can put the farms. Okay. Um, and other resource nodes like these, this, you put a mine on it, you get gold. Wow. Uh, are there any of the other things on this map, or was that just something we won't be going over right now? I guess it's something we won't be going over right now. The only two resources in this game that you are going to be accumulating are gold and wheat. You do not chop down trees in this Age of Empires, even though wood is a, uh, you know, something you see in pretty much every Age of Empires, but not in this one. No wood. Ready. We're gonna chop shit today. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna... Our strategy, I'm gonna bum rush. Straight up. Just bum rush and take them down. Beat them out. And, uh, and that'll be it. Yep, because Richard the... Because Richard the Lionhearted... A militia... And this here Scout Cavalry. If there was ever a team that I trusted to defeat those enemy units on turn one, it, it's these three. There's no other team. Um, not every map is going to be like this, and also not every campaign mission will be like this. They will utilize different uh, settings, so some of them are going to have Flog of War. Goals. Henry's Town must survive. Win before the Imperial Age. Build only one town center. One town center. Well, that sucks. I wanted to build three. Fine. Maybe I should have just had my peasant then walk all the way down to here and build that bitch right in the center. Then I could have fought both of them. You know? Now it's going to be a long-ass walk. <laughs> a long walk. And I'm not going to be able to use most of the buildings. My physical copy of this... And it might be my copy, it might have been the DS, but... Ah, oh, hell. <laughs> Attacks always favor the attacker, typically. Um, I think... They might always, I don't know. But anyway, um, my physical copy of this would crash, but I want to talk about that. It traveled a lot, probably was pretty beat up. The Nintendo DS traveled a lot, probably pretty beat up. Um, but it crashed either when... I don't know what actually caused the crash. I'm just guessing here. Either because of missions taking over an absurdly long amount of time. Because I was dicking around and just having fun. Or because there was too many units recruited. I don't know. But that happened. Just saying. Sometimes some of this game crashed. Alright, I got my villager here. And you know, I don't need to really build any buildings right now. Because I'm just that damn confident. So I'll build that mill. My town center is only called a town center. Not not named. Bull. It's a bunch of bull. It's a bunch of bull, 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 bull. So, wow, these guys are already all moving to engage each other. Isn't that neat? Isn't that fun? Everybody's gonna fight, kill. Ready. Fight, kill. Fight, kill. Kill, fight. Good. Ready. Friendly units are within Richard's sight. Friendly units in sight gain plus 25% attack. Well, that's a ridiculously good ability. Uh, units just lose death, lose health without even attacking. Crazy. Plus one range. Oof. Richard's got some good ass abilities for a hero. Not all heroes have as good of abilities as Richard does. Can I can I cut this guy down? Hmm. Not really. So I'll go right here. And then Richard. The Doombringer. Says, wow, you're gonna challenge me on open planes? Fun 
let me cut you apart. Let me just rip you to shreds. Let me just end your life. Uh, there's a research system in this game. How it works is research just takes one turn. You pay your money and you go underway. <laughs> That's research. Baby, sometimes you need certain buildings to uh, research. So that's where like the blacksmith will come in and where the, the university will come in. Um, empire review it gives you a brief rundown of what's going on with your empire. You can, you know, where your gold is being generated, how much gold, where it's from, how much wheat, where it's from, um, your unit limit and all that. Units, your unit limit increases throughout play. I don't know what causes it yet, so it might be primary resources, it might be uh, just time based, it might even be time, I don't know. Die! Die and be forgotten! Fools, come fight Richard the Lionhearted! Learn your place! In hell! That's where you belong! Ha ha! You know, King Henry's troops could have, like, started with a, I don't know, a knight. It would have been cool. But no, just that stupid peasant. Scout cavalry! Oh man, his his army is getting devastated. Maybe I should have went and helped him. These Frankish rebels are destroying him. What are my rebels? Are my rebels also Frankish rebels? Ready. Ready. Die, Stop. fools! <laughs> King Richard has spoken. Ready. You must die. Alright, well, if you insist. Shouldn't go anywhere near as well as that advisor made it out. Ready. Made it out that it might. Very disappointed. It's okay, I was just relying mostly on King Richard to kill everybody anyway. But Ready. It was an unnecessary casualty. It hurts so bad. Mm. Um. I don't know what. What that guy is heading out to do. There are two. He has two mines. He won't mind if I take the mine closest to me. If I take that mine right there. Oops. Because I want that mine. I'll build a barracks. That way I can start building units to hopefully go support. I guess I should just straight up build cavalry, right? Would have probably been better. Um. None of this matters. I'm not aiming to play this match that long. I'm trying to go for the quick win. Ah, mine are Frankish Rebels too. Why would you do that? Why would you... What possessed you to kill yourself like that? You could have maybe killed that Scout Cavalry in an attack. I don't know. They didn't make a single unit. Well, they're doomed. I'm gonna roll in there like a plague. Wipe them all out. Day four, baby. I have nothing left in my way. I can crush them all. Yeah. Killed. Ready. Beat up their buildings. Beat them up. No building is a match for our strong backs and tireless will. We did 1% damage. That, that'll show it. That'll teach that damned dirty building. Too close to another town center. <sighs> maybe it'd be allowed. Maybe it'd be a cool. Maybe the game would be like, it's fine. I don't know. Oh, I can. I guess that's a bonus objective. I don't know. Or it would just, you build it and the game's like, haha, gotcha, entrapment, you lose. I could send that militia running over here to come save my poor ally, Henry. 
before he gets killed. Uh, no, I don't want Empire Review. I don't want that. I want scoring. Yeah, look at the scores. Look at that. Oh, I'm in first, baby. Oh, wait, no, that's King Henry. Never mind, I'm in last, baby. The military of the ones attacking King Henry, strongest. The military of the blue, the ones that I'm fighting. Weird, it's not gone. It's gone down a lot. Oh, strange. Uh, Henry's economy is good because he's built all those farms. My economy isn't good because I haven't built all those farms. And I'm behind in technology. I don't really know how those scores are tabulated anyway, so but whatever. See, even the villagers can hold their own if they are on a farm. Oh, they die. Never mind. I lied to you. Yeah, give me to the feudal age. Awesome. And then tear it down with our bare hands. Ka-dun, ka dun Alright, well, we didn't do that much because of my penalty against buildings. But, you know, at least we're over there screwing Ready stuff up, right? At least, we're, at least we're making a problem. Agriculture. Long-term investments. That's what I'm making here. Long-term. Oh, I'm at the unit cap? Stupid. Stupid. I hate the unit cap. It's dumb. Uh, I'm researching the thingy mob, which will give me stronger, better, faster units. Maybe I don't need to go help him. He's probably fine. Like, you want to die? I'll take the free experience. I don't mind it. We've advanced to the feudal age. Tribes emerge from the dark ages and began to claw back lost ground. First things first. This dude came up. He wanted to fight me. I got a man at arms, and you know what? I ain't having his shit. What? Bam! Yeah. Thanks for the free battle, loser. All right. Glad that we had that settled. Ready. So you can build these towers. They just give defense bonuses to adjacent buildings. They, they don't attack, so they're useless in my opinion. I don't need them. They're not useless, but they're not great. We really gotta heal that guy. Healing can be done by putting a person onto a friendly building. They'll heal automatically that way. Or by using a hero power. Um, which have unlimited uses, I think, so I'm a big deal there. Well, that's all I can do with my sad army. Oh shit, Spearman. See ya. I'm leaving. I ain't fighting that. I ain't dying today. Bye bye. That horse is constantly running, it sounds like. Oh. Ready. His city is known as Soyal. Soyal? Soy oh, that's a, such a weird Soyal. <laughs> such a I've never heard that name before, so I would not be able to say it in any proper fashion. Frankish rebels. Ooh, alright, so that horse sound effect is gonna keep happening, huh? Hmm. Maybe I'll save state and load the state. Maybe that'll override it. Saving game. Please wait. Oh, it's still happening. There, reset the game. Just hit the button real quick on the N Nintendo DS. Just to... And there we go. It was just, it was upsetting me. I was going to have to leave the game. It was, just, it was going to have to happen. Please continue. Continuing the saved mission. Loading game. Please wait. That one blue army is almost completely wiped out. Awesome. Very happy to see it. Uh, if King Henry's army would just please build a barracks and other stuff and start supplying units to the fight, that'd be awesome. I don't need them. I just want them. It would make my life easier. But hey, whatever they want to do, I guess. My men-at-arms will hold that goddamn bridge as long as it takes. And King Richard will keep slaughtering everyone who walks up to him. Alright, the the insignificant rebel. I just need to kill him and then they will maybe not get a turn anymore. That'd be great. Oh man, he's built a spearman. He's ready to... Uh, oh wait, he also had that one foot soldier. Oh man, he's ready to, to start taking it to the enemy army. I don't know if the AI has unit limits that they have to abide by. They might not. 
I have yet to figure that one out. You're gonna die, friend. Revolt! Oh my gosh. I missed that entire dialogue line, so you know what? I'll be back. I'm gonna go... Uh, I'm gonna go get that back. I didn't know that was coming. Um, so hold on. Oh, for the love of God. I went to quit and it was like, do you wanna... I thought it said, you, you know, I didn't read it. So I thought it said, are you sure you want to quit? I said yes. And I, god damn, redo the whole mission. Uh, I did it. I got impatient, so I didn't do it as well this time. As you can see by the fact that Blue still has, you know, units over here. That aren't destroyed. I got I just, I left, I took Richard off the, up there before, before it was all finished up like an idiot. So... But luckily the AI played bad. I don't think they put a person on their town center, which means that soldier can just destroy it and then they have the one peasant left and they're going to be doomed. These guys haven't summoned any extra units since the original batch. Blue actually were summoning units, as you can see by the fact they had pikemen out there. They put up more of a fight this time. My end, but the other end didn't. So I don't know what's up with that. Ow, that hurt. Yeah, if I kill that peasant, they're done. Which they will be, all thanks to them not putting the pikemen onto that building to defend it, like a bunch of idiots. I don't know why his troops are coming this way, instead of going straight down where I want them to be. My turn. Sire, one of the enemy casualties is your own brother, Henry the Younger. He was leading the rebel revolt. This troubling news displeases your father. He is in mourning and is withdrawing his support from the Camp Hong. We are forced to finish this on our own. Oh no, Henry the Younger. Why would you rebel? King Henry's men are impressed with your military cunning. They shall relay these triumphs in the court of your father. Henry's town must survive. Completed. So they're gone. His men have left me. I'm now all by myself to figure this fight out. Abandoned as a pup. And that wasn't even found by Muriel. Forget that whole farm thing that I told you to work on. We don't need it anymore. We need to just build stuff. Ready. And then you can come back. Start healing up over at our little mini base that we got going. And then we're going to try to flood in and destroy their economy as best we can. Ready. Good. Bam, wiped out. All right. Ready. Good. Pushing in again. day. They're just wandering around. I don't know what they're doing. They, they're Ready. freaking peasants. Yo. But you Ready. know what? I also don't care. Yo. Funny how that works. Ready. Yo. Die, Yo. peasant. Wham. Ready. And now Richard rolls on in. Yo. Start destroying this. And uh, we bring in the rest of these uh, soldiers as reinforcement. And that's about all that is going to happen on this one. I think I can pause it till I finish this match. Don't you hate it when someone rolls up into your territory and just builds a castle in there? I do. That's what I did though. I built a freaking castle. Just like, hey guys. Castle. They're only rank 2. They haven't been able to level it up. You've captured the enemy farms and now produce for your Ready. empire. Ha ha ha. Fools. Okay, now let's see if breaking this one ends the match or not. It does not. I have to break both. Smash! Glad these idiot villagers have just been hanging around doing fuck all. Because they were scared to death when I rolled in. They did summon, as soon as I ended the recording, they like, paused the recording, they summoned a whole bunch of units and fight through. It was, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too bad because I was I'm far ahead of them technologically, so they're kind of screwed. No Ready, one survives. Ready. Bastard rebels. The rebels' armies are suppressed, sire. Peace is returned to your lands. Da 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 da
Da, da. Henry the Younger's death in 1183 momentarily calmed the bickering within Richard's family. It also set Richard in line to be the primary heir, which was much to his liking. But in the turbulent chaos of medieval England and France, things very rarely remained peaceful for long. All in the family part two. We'll just I just want to see what this looks like. When his father threatens to disinherit him, Richard must ally with King Philip of France to seize England's crown for himself. For a while, things remained relatively calm amongst the royal heirs of England, but in 18, 1188, King Henry II decided to make Prince John, Richard's younger brother, the heir to Aquitaine. Aquitaine was most precious to Richard. It was the land of his raising and also the domain of his mother, whom Henry had imprisoned for her role in aiding Henry the Younger in one of his revolts. Richard would not suffer Aquitaine's loss. He was forced into action. Richard's friend, King Philip II of France, offered his aid. Together they would stand against King Henry. You know, if King Philip II of France had not abandoned the crusade, they might have taken Jerusalem. Who knows? It could have happened. King Richard had a plan to attack, a plan to deal with Jerusalem, right? Um, and I think everybody was in agreement with Richard, except for one dude who was like the, the guy who took over the French side of the forces, who's from Burgundy, I believe? Something of Burgundy. And he was like, no, no, we just attack it directly, head on. And Richard was like, fuck that. <laughs> Alright, but let's see what this set piece looks like. Ah, your father's forces are invading these lands, sire. Can we stand against the King of England's might? <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this set piece has us at Limoges. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but it seemed right. And we start off in Rage 2, and this is a dark map. Dark map. It's just us against Henry, mano a mano. But we'll we'll table that. That's for me to play later. Um, I just wanted to take a look at what the set piece looked like. So that's pretty cool. Like it. Great. Alright, save it. Please wait. Saving game! Please wait. Let's go just... I will take us into an Empire map real brief. And then we will uh, run off and do something else. So... There's, there's three different types of character. AI, Attila, aggressive, Ave, I don't know who the hell that, like what that's, Av, I don't know what that is, but no particular strengths or weaknesses, he builds, research, attacks, defends, it looks good doing it, and then turtle, it's a turtle, okay, um, and then, so let's talk a little bit though about like each, each, each faction, and then I'll just show you a little, brief little bit of this four way and talk about those types of generic AI real briefly. Okay, so each race... Is that the right term? Each faction has different benefits. Um, so, for instance, the Mongols have a bonus, a research discount. Uh, that's their bonus. And then their other discounts are for the stable building, the blacksmith, the scout cavalry, and light cavalry, and horse archers, excuse me. Their premiums, which means units that cost more to purchase, are Knight, Cavalier, Pilot, Crossbow, Arbalist, and Hand Cannoneer. So what that what that does, that discounts and premiums, is to try to encourage people to play, um, you know, use units and buildings that are more associated with the, with the faction they're playing, particularly highlighted by the hero. The hero will kind of give you an idea of what particular age they're considering for this faction. Um, so it's just, it's just to encourage, you can still have, you still have access to the other units, they're just slightly more expensive, that's about it. Saracens, income bonus is for mining, they're dis they get an income bonus from mining. Their discounts are Stable Market, Horse Archer, Onager, Bombard, Light Cavalry. Uh, Bombard is probably, they probably get that as their discount, you know, because the, it would, they'd probably, I think they're considering... Um, the Ottoman Empire to kind of be within this umbrella of the Saracen group, uh, even though the Ottoman Empire would come after, but still, there were Turks in that in that area at that time, so. Alright. The Bretons, income bonus for mining. Their discounts include the archery range, the church, the crossbow, arbalist, longsword, 
two-handed champ and, and champion. The two-handed and the champion. Their premiums are Camel, Horse Archer, Onager, and Bombard. Franks, income bonus for farming, because the French are for, uh, were pretty agricultural. Their discounts go to Stable, Castle, Knight, Cavalier, Paladin, and Monk. Their premiums are Camel, Horse Archer, and Scorpion. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very cavalry heavy, since that was the French uh, mainstay of, of the French during the Hundred Years' War, when they were right at the beginning of it, they were really relying on cavalry units. Obviously, Britons were moving towards archers. Um, so, good times, good times. The Japanese, they get an income bonus from farming. Their discounts, mills, mines, spearmen, pikemen, crossbow, arbalist, and hand cannoneer. Cannoner. Can I don't know. Premier premiums are Camel, Knight, Cavalier, and Paladin. They like their foot soldiers and they like their guns. You know why they don't have horses? Because the horses weren't really on Japan. I'm pretty sure horses are an import to Japan. But even if there were native horses to Japan, there wouldn't be very many. It's just not a, it's not a proper uh, island size for them. It's not, it's not the correct ecology, I guess. I don't know what, would, what term you would use. We're going to play the Franks. Even though the Japanese are more to my style as far as, like, I like using the spearmen. You know, I like using spears. Stabbing people. Stab. Stab. I like using archers to shoot arrows at people. But I like the French, so there you go. We'll have the Mongols be the hard unit. We'll have them be that color. Um, we're going to have the British be the... We'll have the Saracens be Ave, and then the British can be the defensive. Defensive? Or do we want to fight the Japanese? We could fight the Japanese. Uh, but we won't. And Britons. British. British. Britain. I want the I want the Saracens to be orange. The British can be, No, you know what? The British should be orange. Saracens will be purple. Okay. From what I understand of these different factions. So I've played I've run through a few maps. Oh, you idiot. I have to run I have to redo that. I hate how that works. So Attila is the worst. Um Abe is the best. Turtle is mediocre as well. That's what it seemed like. Turtle defends and he's good at doing that. Attila pushes too far and gets punished for it. And Av, Av just hangs out and does a good job at it. So uh, We could go Corner Kingdoms. That sounds fun. Uh, archipelago small is too small. So an archipelago normal is too small. And Arabia is Arabia. Which means I just don't think there would be much preventing people from just rushing each other. So Corner Kingdoms at least has water preventing people. There's no naval units, so... Alright, you want to do a team battle? We could do a team battle. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not showing this. What am I doing? I'm just going to hang out. Do this for very briefly. I always take off black map, because I, I just don't like it. Um... But, of course, you know, if you want to have it be where you have to go search, you can do that. I just, I don't like to do that. I'd rather just be able to see and go and do. Alright. So, without black map, you can see everything, right? That's actually better for us anyway. So, if you land on a goat, you just get food. If you end, end a turn. If you end a turn on this, you get money. Um... This little, like, pearly thingy is a relic. So you want to collect those and take those to a church. They will generate income for you. And I have no goddamn clue what this is yet. Because I can't remember what it does, and I didn't figure that out whenever I was playing a map. So, you know. Um, based on what this map looks like, I'm assuming each of us is in one of these little things. Which is really cool, and I appreciate that, because that'll at least make it less... Because one of the things that happened whenever I was running my other match was that um, the two AI who weren't Av, Av, whatever, so Attila and Turtle both found me very early on and then they started trying to attack me and then Av just kind of picked them off and was like, ooh, okay, well, hey. that's great. Gonna go ahead and build that 
lovely town center right there. Beautiful. My leader as the French, Jean Roc. Her powers are inspiration to heal for 20 HP, which is kind of really powerful. Uh, all unit friendly units gain 5 HP across the map, which is pretty powerful. Enemy units suffer negative defense. Pretty good. Um, and then just a hurt ability. But, you know, the healing that she has on her kit and the, uh, the defense break is pretty good. But the healing's the main thing. That's just awesome to have mobile healing happening. End the day. Attila Heart. And then after Attila's turn. Weird noises are happening. I don't know why those were. Ob Hard. This is the same. He used a special. This is the same configuration that I used whenever I played my test map, so I had the same hard characters, right? And then I had, um. Ugh, stretchy. And then I had I had them all the same. So it was Mongolia, it was Saracens, and it was British. So maybe the. You know, so there's. there's it's either Ob is the best, or the Saracens are the best, or it was because, you know, they spent too much time trying to attack me. Train a villager. Hey. I'm gonna go out and secure some uh, territory. Right. And I don't like to have fog of war off, just because um, it you have to, it just makes the enemies do weird shit and it slows down, it slows the game down. It seems like, or at least it slows their turns down. It seems like. But anyway, I think that's gonna be all. I don't really have an interest in showing kind of any of the fighting that goes down in this one. Um, maybe if I get done with this match fast enough, I'll show, like, where everybody... You know, if I get to, like, the halfway point in this match, I'll show where everybody is on the scorecards so that you can kind of see. So we can discuss uh, who's doing the best as far as um, which one of the AI. And that's... But that'll be about it. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to show. Everything else kind of works the way you would expect. So, like, with certain units, like the monks, they can heal units. They can just walk up and heal them. Uh, as their turn action, or they can try to convert an enemy unit as their turn action. Um, siege equipment, the Scorpions can't attack buildings, which is a departure from the Edge of Empires series, but they are still focused on enemy infantry. Um, Battering Ram can't hurt infantry, you can only do damage to buildings, and then you have the catapults as well, so. Alright. Okay. Sean is overpowered. You sit her on a bridge and she can just fight off the world, apparently. Oops, didn't mean to do that. She can just fight off the world because she just heals for 20 every round. So, it's wonderful. Um, didn't find anybody until I ran her over, like, all the way over to this bridge. And then I found that Tilla was over there. Because I was just staying back in my area, playing defensively, didn't hire any fighting units and even build structures. But Turtle is up here. Tilla's to my left, as you see. And then, um, and then Av uh, is up, up there where where that would have worked out for him had I discovered the other two first, but I, since I was like, no, nah, fuck that, I remember last time that I discovered them and it didn't go, like, you know, then they came after me, I'm not doing it this time. So I guess they both started attacking him, maybe? I don't know what, what went down, because I can't see it, right, but... In terms, let's take a look in terms of scoring here. Av has the prime pull position at number one. Turtle has fallen behind. Um, but let's take a look at what the hell this has actually fared out. You can see my tiny little dink army that I wasn't using. And then you can see that Turtle for a bit had a consistent army. Um, because Turtle apparently wasn't fighting anybody, right? And Turtle might honestly still not be fighting anybody. Turtle may just have kept to their own base and never left that island. I don't know. I saw one of their villagers moving out, so maybe they just now recently started moving. But their military, as you can see, has remained fairly consistent. Av and Attila have clearly been fighting each other, and it was more it was easier to tell that a few turns ago. When the when you could see where they you could see their lines interact with each other. And you could see the drops and stuff from from them obviously fighting. Um, so they were battling each other early on. And then you got the economy line. Turtle's economy has been a little weird, but other than that, every economy has worked it's about the same, except for mine. My what do 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 kinda weird. Uh, only Av has been credited with exploration. I don't know why. Don't know what what constitutes exploration. 
And then, yeah, I, I dropped a little bit behind on technology because my economy was lagged for so long. Um, because I, kind of, I, I just didn't have any gold in my start. I had that one gold spot in my starting area, and then I had the one that was a little bit out. And then I had to go to the other island to get the other gold. But anyway, it looks as if I was just overall managing their economy and everything. Like, managing all their stuff the best, the total empire the best. I'm falling slightly behind on the economic front. That's, I think, a byproduct of fighting with Attila. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Anyway, that's it. That's thanks for watching this video. I'm not gonna, probably not gonna do anything else in this. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I encourage people to play this game. It was a really interesting game for Nintendo DS. Uh, good time. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya. Bye bye.